This video is about finding the average value of a function z equals f of x, y over region r. And first I wanted to talk about uh, where the average value um, formula comes from and then we'll apply it to solve an example problem. So let's say you've got a function f of x, y equals z and it looks like this and you're integrating it um, over the region r. Um, then we would find the volume under the surface um, or the volume between this surface and the region R in the XY plane. Now I just happen to draw the region R um, as a rectangular region, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be a rectangular region. Um, but I could find the volume under that surface this way. We do the double integral over R of f of XY dA. And if that wasn't, um, if this function f of XY isn't um, non-negative all the time, if it isn't always positive or possibly zero, um, then this would be a net volume. It'd be volume above the xy plane minus volume below the xy plane, but it's vol volume bounded by this surface and the xy plane. So it would be a net volume in that case. Um, but let's just, let's stick to this case for right now. If I want the average value of z, basically what I'm looking for is a value of z so that this volume would be exactly the same if I drew a cylinder that had exactly the same value for r on the bottom, but instead of having this function f of xy on top, it just had the average, um, the average value of z. So I want this volume over here. This is the same region r. to be the same as this volume over here. The z value that would make this volume the same as that volume is called the average value of z. So this is z average. So basically, um, z average times the area of r, that's the volume of this guy, has to equal the volume of that guy. And the volume of that guy is that double integral over r of f of x, y. So if I want the average value, I just take the volume integral and I divide by r, or excuse me, divide by the area of r. Um, and that's going to tell me exactly what that height would have to be so that this um, solid is exactly the same volume as this solid. I think I made that, that one a little bit too high. And that's not going to be the average value. The average value of this, it looks like it's probably going to be some z value in here around that level. Okay, so here's our formula for z average. The average value of z over the interval or over the um, region r is the volume divided by the area of the region. That volume divided by the area is going to give us the height that we need. And the area of the region R is just the double integral um, over R of dA. So it's just volume divided by area, but those are represented by double integrals now. Okay, so now we want to apply that formula to a particular function. We've got uh, z equals f of xy, which is e to the x, um, plus 2y. And we want the average value over a triangle with these vertices. So this is a triangle in the xy plane. So the first thing I want to do is draw that triangle. Now remember, I'm not sketching the surface z equals f of xy here. I'm just drawing the region r in the xy plane. So we're told that 0, 0 is one part of uh, or as one vertex of that triangle, x equals 0, y equals 2 is another vertex, and then x equals 4, y equals 2 is another one. So 
So that's our region in the xy plane. That's R. And in order to find the average value of z, we need the double integral over r of z, where z is equal to e to the x plus 2y, and we also need the area of this. Now the area of r can be found with a double integral, but since it's a triangle, it's easier if we just find it the traditional way. Um, so we'll just say the area of r is the double integral over r of dA, which, since it's a triangle, that's just one half base times height. So it's one half, the length of the base is four, and the height is two. So the area of the triangle is four. <coughs> but, um, so now I've got that denominator. Now I need the numerator. Now to find the numerator, I need to describe r differently. I can't just multiply by a four. That's not gonna work. Um, I need to find some bounds for r. Now, there are, of course, two ways we can do this. We can describe r this way, where y goes from a function to a function, and x goes from a constant to a constant, or we could draw our rectangles this way, so that x goes from a function to a function, and y goes from a constant to a constant. I think I wanna do both, and we'll see which one looks simpler. Um, let's let y go from a function to a function first. And then we'll let x go from a constant to a constant. If x is going from a constant to a constant, we can see for the region r, x starts at 0 and ends at 4. And if, if y is going from a function to a function, the top function is easy. It's just y equals 2. The bottom function isn't that difficult either. It's a line. The y-intercept is 0. And the slope is, well, rise over run. We go up 2 and over 4. So the slope is 1 half, 2 over 4. So we get 1 half x. So that's one way to descri describe this region. Another way to describe the region is to let x go from a function to a function and to let y go from a constant to a constant. Now y goes from zero to two. I'll always do the constant parts first because that's easiest. And then if x goes from a function to a function, it goes from a function on the left to a function on the right. The function on the left is x equals zero. And the function on the right, well it's, it's given by the x value on this line. And we just found the equation of that line we had y equals one half x. That's the equation of that line. Now in order to find this boundary um, and in terms of, or for x, um, I need to take this equation and I need to solve it for x as a function of y. So I'm really taking x on the left, that's this bound, and then I need x on the right for this bound. So we'll solve this for x by multiplying both sides by two and we get 2y equals x. So those are our bounds. <coughs> okay, so we can use these bounds or these bounds. They're both pretty simple. I think I'm going to use these um, just because I've got more zeros, but actually either one would be pretty simple integral, pretty simple integration. So let's find the volume under this exponential function, it's exponential in x and y, above this region r. Now I don't know what that looks like, but we know as x gets larger, the z grows exponentially. As y gets larger, the z grows exponentially. So it does not look like this, but I'm just going to draw my cartoon. Here's z equals f of x, y, there's x, there's y, and this is a triangle in the xy plane, goes up here to y equals 2, x goes to 4, and it's a triangle that looks like that. So we want the volume under this surface above that triangle. The surface really doesn't look like that, but that's, that's just giving us the idea of what's going on. Okay, so let's find the volume. It's the double integral over r of our function.
Sorry, this is a little messy in this video. Not, not as organized this time, sorry. Okay. Now f of xy is e to the x plus 2y. Um, and actually, we're going, if we use these bounds, I integrate with respect to x first, and then y. x goes from 0 to 2y, and y goes from 0 to 2. Now, this is easier if you simplify first. Remember this property from algebra. You have x to a power times x to a different power. You just add the exponents. That works as long as the bases are the same. Um, and it also works backwards. So if I see x raised to a sum like this, I can always split it up and write it as a product. I can write it as x to this power times x to that power. The same is true here, even though the base is an e instead of an x. So I can rewrite this this way. This is the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from 0 to 2y of e to the x times e to the 2y. And then it makes it even easier to integrate. That's not the necessary step, but it helps us. It makes our um, calculation easier. e to the 2y is a constant, so you can pull that out. The antiderivative of e to the x with respect to x is e to the x, and you'll evaluate from x equals 0 to x equals 2y. Remember, these are bounds for x. x starts here and ends here. So if e to the 2y times, when I replace x with 2y, I have an e to the 2y. When I replace x with 0, I have an e to the 0. So this is e to the 0, which is 1. And of course, you can distribute now this times this. We add the exponents using that rule again. So that's e to the 4y minus e to the 2y. And those are really simple integrals to evaluate. So I'm going to go over here. The antiderivative of e to the 4y is e to the 4y. Since we've got a constant times y inside, we divide by that constant. We subtract the antiderivative of e to the 2y. So we get e to the 2y, and we've got a constant inside, so we divide by that constant. And then we evaluate this from y equals 0 to y equals 2. So we get 1 fourth e to the 8th minus 1 half e to the 4th. And then when we evaluate at y equals 0, we get 1 fourth e to the 0 minus 1 half e to the 0. So you have 1 fourth e to the 8th minus 1 half e to the 4th. 1 fourth minus 2 fourths is negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth times negative 1 is positive 1 fourth. Oh, that's that. But it's actually, I don't know why I put a box around it. That's actually just the volume of this piece. Remember what the question was. We were asked to find the average value of this function over this triangle. So I need to take the volume and divide this volume, take it and divide by the area of the triangle. So average value of z is the volume under the surface divided by the area. And so we get 1 fourth e to the eighth minus 1 half e to the fourth plus 1 fourth. I'll divide it by 4. Let me write this a little bit nicer. So 
This integral happened to be 1 fourth e to the eighth minus 1 half e to the fourth plus 1 fourth, and we're dividing all of that by 4, which is the same as taking that and multiplying by 1 fourth. It's the same thing. If you distribute the 1 fourth, you get 1 16th e to the eighth minus 1 eighth e to the fourth, and 1 fourth times 1 fourth is 1 16th. So that is the average value of z. If z is equal to this, and we draw a little um, triangular prism above that triangle, so here it is. We've got a triangle that looks like this. and the z value is given by that function, and I'm not really sure what it is, but let's just say it's up here. It's equal to that number. And I draw a triangular prism like this. I'm not doing a very good job with my triangular prism. This little M.C. Escher-esque. Um, but you get the idea. You're going to see a triangle up here and a triangle down here. This little wedge has exactly the same volume as um, this volume right here. The volume under the surface, where that surface is given by uh, z equals e to the x plus 2y. Um, that z average, that's that number, so that this would have the same volume as the volume under the surface of the original surface given by z equals f of x, y.